but Minister, um, when it comes to jobs, Brexit obviously is mainly about risk mitigation and uh, protecting as many jobs as we can. And as we all know, sectors like agri-food, tourism, retail, manufacturing are in, in, under very serious threat. Um, one area of potential opportunity, obviously, is financial services. Um, and maximising the, not just the amount of jobs that come over, but the sustainability of those jobs and the total benefit to the sector requires um, a very strategic approach, um, which means we need to be attracting the full ecosystem of financial services. So the question is, um, with respect to infrastructure companies and financial services, how many infrastructure companies have been engaged with by the state? How many have agreed to set up operations in Ireland? And how many jobs would be associated with that? Thank you. Thank That's you, Ken true. Corley. And thank you, Deputy, for the question. Since the decision of the UK to leave the European Union, the contingency planning by international financial services firms has increased significantly, given the uncertainty surrounding the eventual outcomes. This planning involves examining current business models and information gathering to assess the potential post-Brexit scenario. As part of this information gathering, many firms have been in contact with government departments, agencies and the central bank. These engagements with officials, both at home and abroad, have involved firms engaged in a wide range of financial services activities. IDA Ireland, which leads <coughs> our efforts to attract additional financial services in line with the IFS 2020 strategy, has dealt with an excess of 100 queries from businesses about locating in Ireland. In my role as Minister of State for Financial Services, I have visited London, Asia, North America and other locations on a number of occasions. Furthermore, the second European Financial Forum, which I hosted, was held in Dublin Castle in January to showcase Ireland's offering to an international audience and highlight the Government's commitment to the development of international financial services. Antisha Genda Kenny provided the opening address. The Minister for Finance, Mr Michael Noonan, attended the closing session of the forum and gave the final remarks. In addition, the Minister for Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation, Mary Mitchell O'Connor, gave the afternoon ministerial address. Recently, St. Patrick's Day trade missions saw the Taoiseach Tornish and 27 ministers taking part in over 100 business events and high-level political meetings in 27 countries. As part, of, as part of this, I visited Canada and Minister Noon visited Malaysia and Singapore. Once a relocation recommendation has been taken by senior management in a firm, the Deputy will appreciate that the board of the firm will have to agree the decision and, in due course, shareholders and current regulators will have to be informed before the actual decision can be made public. Until these steps have been completed, it is not possible for IDA Ireland or indeed myself to give any precise, precise information on the potential movers post-Brexit. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Donnelly. Um, thank you, Minister. I, I think we would both accept that the question I asked didn't, uh, didn't get answered, it, it, it didn't get addressed. Look, Ireland is an obvious location for uh, financial services firm, for firms looking to set up outside the, the uh, set up in the EU. We're a common law system. We're English speaking. There's close cultural similarities. There's a big multinational presence here, and so forth. More and more, the big firms are deciding not to come here. We're seeing announcement after announcement that they're deciding to locate uh, elsewhere within the EU. Partly, this is because the IDA hasn't been given sufficient resources. It's been given nine extra people. I to put that into perspective, the Guardian newspaper has a Brexit team, which is, which is nine people. Um, it's partly because we are missing some of the key skill sets. So in my opinion, we should be hiring people who are senior financial services players in the UK for a year or two to come and help us with this. But it's partly because we are lacking a strategic approach. So Minister, can I ask you specifically on the numbers, what interaction has there been with the financial services companies in the UK, mainly based out of London, but they're around the UK, that specialise in providing financial services infrastructure oh my God. Uh, to, uh, to, the, to the market? Thank you. Minister, one minute. Uh, thank you, Laskai uh, Corla. I mean, financial services infrastructure is a very important part of this piece in terms of future proofing the, the future of our IFS offering here in Ireland, as the Deputy points out. Uh, when we look at certain parts of infrastructure and the potential to, to, for it to relocate here or to establish itself here, because there's only a few number of players in the market, we can't be precise about exactly what conversations we've had because it will be quite clear in terms of potentially the companies that we've been talking about or are talking to. Also, when we talk about infrastructure, there's a number of different aspects to infrastructure. Are we talking about the technology resources of particular entities or firms that are currently operating here? Are we talking about MTFs? Are we talking about CSD, CCPs? There are different elements to this. Of course, <coughs> over the course of the last year, uh, we have been engaging with different firms who are potentially looking at establishing a presence here or relocating a particular activity here. We then are talking to other companies that aren't directly financial service companies themselves, but they have an element of their business that is significant enough that they have a subsidiary excuse me, that might be operating in a particular area, for example, in terms of payments. 
We have the IFS 2020 strategy, which is a five-year uh, strategy for increasing our international financial services offering. We work with industry to develop that strategy. As a result of having that strategy in place since 2015, it meant we were ahead of the game in terms of attracting financial services firms in, into Ireland to allow that continuity, continuity of service into the single market. Not every company is going to come here that relocates out of the UK. We have to be honest about this. There's going to be an ebb and flow to this, as I have said. There will be a strong flow to Ireland from the meetings that I've already had and decisions that have already been taken by companies. But it's up to the companies themselves to decide when they want to notify the public, their customers, their uh, staff, shareholders, and the regulators in the jurisdictions where they are currently based. And when they do that, then we'll be in a position to, to, to comment publicly about that ourselves. But there will be companies relocating here, but they'll also relocate to other jurisdictions as well in Europe. Thank you. Sir, so here, here's the fear. The IFS strategy basically said we're going to make two big plays, one in fintech and one other place. And then post-Brexit, uh, it was taken back into the department and it came back out sort of Brexit-proof. But actually, if you compare the pre and post, they're pretty much the same. It still says two plays, which is fintech and another one, which, which, which escapes me. There is a big opportunity that Brexit presents, which is now different, which is to say we're not just going to go and try and get... Um, you know, insurance companies, reinsurance companies, trading firms, and so forth. There's a real opportunity to say, we can bring the entire ecosystem over to Dublin, or over to wherever it sets up in, in Ireland. One of the reasons London is so strong, as you know, is because it has the full ecosystem. And a core piece of this is the infrastructure. The fear from financial services players in Dublin, Minister, is that we bring some of these firms over, but because we don't create a sustainable infrastructure around them, in time they move. They move to Luxembourg, they move to Frankfurt, wherever it is. Whereas what's a, what is very sticky is the infrastructure firms. The information I have from very well-placed people within the industry is that the infrastructure firms uh, are not being approached by the Irish state and need to be. What the infrastructure firms are saying is they are being wined and dined by the French, by the Belgians, by Luxembourg, by the Spanish, and they, they're not seeing sight nor sound of the Irish. So nobody is saying that you're not busy, Minister. I know you're busy. We know you're busy. My sense is we could, oh we could be more strategic, we could be more clever, and have a strategy that encompasses the full ecosystem so that when we get these firms over here, they stay here and grow rather than relocating here temporarily. Thank you. Final response. Thank you, Deputy. I mean, we share the same ambition here. I like to think that all parties in this house share the same ambition when it comes to the potential opportunities that might come from Brexit. There's no point in being busy if it's not to a strategic objective. I have met with infrastructure providers, with some of them on a number of occasions. So, of course, it's part of the strategy that we are developing to make sure that every opportunity that might come from Brexit is there and available to us to, to take advantage of. Companies will make relocation decisions based on a number of factors. Um, Across the board, we have heard that we are coming in the top three of companies' relocation potential options. They will pull the trigger for this jurisdiction, but they'll also pull it for the trigger for other jurisdictions for other legacy reasons, for example. One big international bank has decided to go to Paris because a legacy acquisition 12 years ago made sense for it because it already had the authorization for its banking license, for example. If you look at the action plan for 2017 of the IFS 2020 strategy, there are two component parts to it. The first component part is the Brexit narrative, talking about contingency planning, communications, the central bank piece in this, other areas like international baccalaureate education and what we need to do. The second part is the 40 individual action points and how we're going to address, just in this year alone, uh, IFS and, and how we plan to grow it for the year. Some of them are very Brexit-related, some of them are less directly so. Um, no one individual ecosystem in international financial services is going to relocate to another jurisdiction. Oh my um, if you look at, for insur example, insurance, not all of the insurance companies are going to go to one place, and it's good that they don't. It's good that they actually operate from, from different jurisdictions under different, um, or, or, you know, in different markets as they can into the single right. market. What's very important to us is the skill set and having the people here. Oh and that's why when you look at one of the pillars of those 40 action points in the IFS strategy for this year, it's looking at education, uh, training and skills development, and also attracting Irish immigrants back home into these high-level jobs that are being created now, yeah. and not just in Dublin, but also in Cork and other parts of the country as well. Oh Thank you. Uh,